Ruth Goodman takes us back to the day that arrows fell like rain 600 years ago <laughs> on the battlefields of northern France. <laughs> A thousand reenactors from all over the world have gathered in northern France to mark the 600th anniversary of the Battle of Agincourt. It's the largest gathering here of longbowmen since 1415, when the English king, Henry V, defeated the French army despite being outnumbered four to one. Contemporary accounts say that the English arrows blotted out the sun, and these 21st century archers are going to try and recreate the arrow storm that sealed Henry's victory. The English army was fighting to pursue Henry's claim to the French throne. Henry had been terrorizing northern France for months. By now, his army had dwindled to 6,000 men. The French army was much larger, by some accounts, 36,000. The French had blocked the road to the north. Henry had no choice but to fight. The longbow had already proven its worth in the armies of Edward I in the mid-13th century, uh, first against the Welsh, then the Scots, and then the French. But it was by no means an easy weapon to master. And that's why English archers were, were taught to shoot the bow from about the age of seven. Loose. Accurate, deadly, and with a range of over 200 meters, the arrows were specially designed to punch through armor. The French were armed with handguns and crossbows, powerful and easier to use, but with a much slower rate of fire. They would rely on heavily armored cavalry, infantry, and sheer weight of numbers to smash the English. The battle began not with the massed ranks of the French attacking the English, but with Henry bringing up his three small mustard pots worth of army and loosing off a great shower of arrows. So a charge was started. Henry, however, had been really clever about choosing his battle site. He was between two small woods. So the French were unable to surround or come in from the flank. They had to mass up front and charge straight on at the English archers. This was a difficult, slow slog through knee-deep mud. And as they got closer, this slow slog was under a constant hail of arrows. It's said by some accounts that as many as a 1,000 per second were raining down. And when the exhausted survivors finally reached the English lines, they were faced with a palisade of sharpened stakes. They were killed in their thousands. The longbowmen are about to give a demonstration of an arrow storm. It's taken years of planning by hundreds of enthusiasts. The French king, Charles VI, didn't fight at the battle, but he lost the cream of his army and many nobles. He was eventually forced to agree to a marriage between his daughter and the victorious Henry. The King of England was now in line to be the next King of France. <laughs> Henry and his longbowmen won the day, but Henry would never sit upon the French throne. He died aged just 35, a few weeks before the French King died. The English claim, however, to the French throne didn't go away for another four centuries. And now, 600 years later, the arrow storm is back. Wow. It's an amazing scene, isn't it, all those arrows?